How's it going, YouTube? This is Scorpion Rocks coming in for the first time ever on a webcam and doing some solo commentary. Uh, this is a huge, huge monumental thing for me at this point in time because I've never done this kind of thing before. Not really a good attempt at it, I should say. Uh, and I thought, why not for like an awesome thing such as this, we are going to start off with Final Fantasy IX, what is one of my most absolute, 100% most favorite games that I've ever played ever. Not so much specifically within the Final Fantasy uh, games, but just video gaming in general. Absolutely. Uh, I am very new to this kind of thing, so quick rundown of what exactly I'm going to try to do with this is a lot of RPGs can be very grind heavy, that kind of thing. I'm still kind of debating how exactly I'm going to do this because for a game like this, every time I play it, I always like to have these huge moments of just take X number of hours and just grind the fuck out of my characters because that's what I can do. I'm one of those weird people where I really enjoy it. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly what I'll do. I might just do uh, between videos kind of grind sessions in that, uh, possibly doing information updates where uh, what I would do is have a little post at the beginning of the next video saying like, hey, between videos, this is what has improved, you know, the character levels and stats, what kind of things I can throw in on there to do all that. Um, other than that, that's effectively a quick little rundown of what I'm hoping to do here. I want to make this an entire full playthrough. Um, I'm really just hoping to have a really good time with this, my first real delve into doing this. Uh, with like full commitment behind it and all that. I'm super excited to give this a shot and I really can't think of much more else to say here other than like let's get this shit started. This will not be PC. Uh, I will try to keep things like swearing and all that down to a minimum but of course if I get too excited or it's just the best way I can think of to describe a word or a situation I will 100% not be doing the greatest kind of censoring for everything. But other than that, I say we start this whole thing going and get ourselves out here with a new game. I have kind of decided that when it comes to the uh, FMV cutscenes, as we are starting to see now here at the beginning, uh, I'm thinking more likely than not, I will be withholding from commentary obviously excluding right now as I explain this um, mostly just because I want to allow to you the viewers to have like a full enjoyment of these kind of things because I absolutely love these uh, FMV videos and the whole thing because it takes what you see in the game and just maxes it out to like 150 and I just think it's absolutely glorious so please enjoy Alright, here we are at the start. Beautiful opening cutscene and all that, and we begin what is quite literally the absolute beginning of our adventure. And I have decided I will be reading the words, so I don't know if I'll try any impressions or voices and all that kind of stuff, but 
I will definitely be giving this a full read through, which I haven't done for the longest time, having played this game so many times, I don't fully need to read all the words anymore, but let's do this. Sure is dark. Guess nobody's here yet. And we have our controls that I am going to need to change, confirm, and cancel because they are legit the opposite of what they need to be. I am using a, uh, I think it's actually an Xbox One controller. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, if I get to the menus here quickly. No, right, forgot, it's backwards. Uh. Does it not have. Uh, run, field mesh, it's fast. I could have swore it had. Oh, here we go. Controls. Here we go. There we are. Head back. Okay. Good to go. Thank you. Sorry for that. Should be. Alright, do a stuff here. So, currently, this is our main character. He is in the little mini room here. Light the candle in the middle of the room. I will do that. First, there's a few things I want to find, or not so much find, but get, if I can remember exactly where they are. There is some money here. And we have a potion. Now that's pretty much it. There is on the wall here a little thing that tells you about the uh, Prima Vista, the theater ship that we are currently on. Just gives you some information and all that about it. Not the most interesting that kind of thing, but to move on, we just come here and light the candle. Lights up this room, you can see where we are. Who's there? And this is Zidane. Zidan. I, I always go with Zidane. Uh, but for me, personally, when I play these games, I like to give it like my own personal name, and I hope this will fit. Uh, it's not going to... Uh, make this one of these awkward. Uh, do -do. Yeah, Skirpenrooks. That that's oh, totally a hundred percent not awkward at all. But this is what we're gonna go with. Close as I can get to my name for here. It's me, Scorpion Rocks. These are our little fellow uh, teammates, thieves of the group. Don't know if that's a bit of a spoiler. Don't know whoever's played this before and all that. Uh, hey, Scorpion Rocks, you sure are late. Sorry. So, where's the boss? Ain't here yet. But this is Blank, Cinna, and Marcus. And this guy here is the boss of their little uh, theater troupe. Uh, thieves Guild, whatever you want to call it. And he is also technically our first boss fight that we just immediately run into here. Nothing too difficult, it's about as simple as any starting boss fight can give you. Uh, I'd say it works as a tutorial, but it doesn't really because it doesn't... Oh, it does. Oh, ah, it's been a while since I've played this. So it does actually have uh, controls uh, explained to you and all that in that nice little window there. I 100% forgot about that, but whatever. Uh, something to remember... Uh, or at least that I always try to do while I play this game is that stealing can actually be very, 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 very helpful. I know it's in like every Final Fantasy game, but a lot of the time what I've noticed is when you steal from your enemy and that the most you're getting is like potions, maybe an ether or a phoenix down. But what I liked about Final Fantasy IX is that many of the bosses actually have uh, items that you can get sooner than you can buy them. So it could either be a piece of armor, a weapon, or something that could be used as a material for, as you'll find out later when we use synthesis. Synthesis? Sure. Uh, that allows us to get more powerful weapons, armors, accessories, all that kind of thing. <laughs> hey fools! You're looking a lot better. <laughs> Alright, let's start this meeting already. So, we are currently on our way towards the. This is kind of like the capital city of Alexandria. And as is soon to be explained, this is not your average theater troupe. Here's the plan Tantalus, the infamous band of daring thieves, that's us is heading to the Kingdom of Alexandria. 
Our mission? To kidnap heir to the throne, Princess Garnet. I'll take it from here, so listen up. Our ship's about to dock at Alexandria. And when it does, we're going to put on our costumes. And perform I Want to Be Your Canary, the most popular play in Alexandria. Break a leg, Marcus, because you're playing the lead. Leave the acting to me. Of course, the real kidnappers will be blank and scorpion rocks. I'll distract the audience from backstage with these little buggers. I can't stand Oglops. Oglops? Yeah. But I'll manage. But I'll manage, so don't worry about me. Reading. It's a wonderful skill to have. And that will be your cue, Scorpion Rocks. <laughs> this is always funny because I've never done it myself, but apparently, if you select this first option here, that's when I kidnap Queen Brain, right? If you do this enough times in a row and take a long time to get on to the next part of everything, uh, another part of the crew, Ruby, who we run into later, comes in and is all like, ah, you guys are taking too long, hurry the heck up. <sighs> oh, I totally forgot about this Larry here, ah, quit joking around. I didn't even know that was a thing, and I swear I've played this before. But, um, yeah, so she comes in, it's a nice little, like, Easter egg that happens, kind of a uh, little joke thing and all that, but... I don't know how, it's something like 50 times as I have to do, so I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to move on and say that's when I kidnap Princess Garnett, right? You bet. You're going to kidnap the most babelicious beauty in all of Alexandria, Princess Garnett. And we dissolve fade into the next FMV. And now we come into what is, I would say, effectively the actual start of the game. Now that the opening credits and that have been done, it's where we kind of... Uh, I want to say break out into like actual gameplay, though we technically have had that already, but... It'll make more sense if I kind of had the time to explain things, but I don't want to be too explanations heavy with everything, because lord knows people come to see the actual game, so... We're going to carry on. <laughs> Are you alright? This is Vivi, one of the more uh, recognizable characters of Final Fantasy IX, if not only for the fact that he is very much a call to the uh, classic Black Mage look, but also if you've played games such as Kingdom Hearts 2, he has actually had a part in those games as well. Don't know why they didn't choose other characters, but I guess Vivi was like a fan favorite or something. Here, you dropped your ticket. Bye-bye. Oh, gotta love those kids. So, this is where we start playing. The controls are a little wonkier than I remember. Uh, Rat Kid, why you get out of my way? World building, I guess. But this brings us uh, to the streets of Alexandria. Honorable nobles of Trino, Castle Ex Alexandria is this way. I've always thought it was a bit weird that within this uh, universe or world they have anthropomorphic animals and stuff. And like most other things, like if you think Disney, where it comes to like Pluto and Goofy, you have the animals that walk up as a human, but you also have regular animals. And I've kind of always wondered, it, what's the difference? Like, why does one get to be a human and one doesn't? But we are here at like the little main square here. Uh, there are stores in this area, but due to their festival and all that, they cannot 
Uh, they will not sell us anything. But we'll get a little bit of exploring out of the way. Because there are a few items I want to pick up. Um, you're, it, at this point, it's like just a couple things like cards and a couple items, that sort of thing, that are scattered around here because there is. Uh, I'm just talking to this kid here. There's, I, I don't want to say like a side mission, but there's a mini game that's in, like, they have mini games within many of the Final Fantasy games. And this one, it's a card game called Terra. And what you can do is you can find cards and you can also win them from the people that you defeat. And I just have this bit of like a ritual kind of thing where I always, for whatever reason, pick up the cards that I can get for free uh, in and around Alexandria, Castle Town, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I don't know, like they're not even anything super special or anything like that, but I have never not missed them and I can't for the life of me ever not pick them up. So here we find a zombie card. If we make our way around here, I think it's almost directly behind this. There we go. Behind the statue, we find a lizard man card. And I think the final one is up this little staircase here. Yep. A Sahagan card. There's still a bit of debate, I find, uh, particularly between me and my friends whenever we're playing uh, Pathfinder or it's brought up in any other kind of medium, how to pronounce that word. A little like fishy people that are a mainstay in things like D&D, &D, Pathfinder, that kind of thing, how exactly you uh, pronounce it. I've always gone with Sahagan. I think it's the most accurate one. And I am currently realizing that I did forget a uh, quick little side thing here that I can do to get myself another card. This is why I always set this stuff to run because it just gets you from point A to point B so much faster. This little kitty cat here brings in that other little boy that we talked to down by the docks. Oh, you found him! Come here! Thanks! And then he just runs away. Just, you gotta thank you and that's all. If we essentially follow him, making our way back all the way to the docks area again, be making a stop because there's another character I want to talk to that effectively unlocks more free stuff for us. Back here in the main uh, square circle area, whatever you'd like to call this, he is. There he is. Almost blended into the background. Talk to him. Hid my three precious cards in a safe place. It doesn't really give you much more of a hint than that. Um, for allowing you to get free stuff, it really just doesn't tell you where you can get it. But as we come over here to talk to the cat boy again. No, that's his cat. There. Stop talking to the cat. There we go. Thanks. Here, this is for you. We get a bomb card. Yes! It's basic, but compared to the other cards we found, it's actually better than they are. And if we come up this way, towards the top of this bell tower, which we will be revisiting again later, we can pull the rope, which will ring the bell. I'm surprised doesn't cause suspicion to anyone in town. And we find his secret cards. An Ironite, a Goblin, and a Fang card. There is a time that you can come back here later in game and effectively do the same thing over again. And it will have different cards inside the box that you can pick up. Don't know why he thinks it's going to be just as safe the second time, but... Oh, simple minds, that kind of thing. But now we're actually going to advance some of this uh, storyline in that. As we come here to the ticket booth, we're going to peek inside. Can I help you, son? We are going to show him our ticket, just to speed things along here. What's this? There's something odd about this ticket. Why, it's another fake. I've seen so many today. No. Now, now, don't cry. I know how you must feel. Here. I'll give you these. Do try to cheer up now. We get a goblin card, a fang card, and a skeleton card. I don't know how much that ticket costs, but with how common those cards are, I feel like that is no nowhere near an even trade for not being able to go see the show. 
Talk to Alleyway Jack to learn more about cards. Good luck, lad. Now, as you notice, Alleyway Jack's name was in blue writing. That means in some way he's got a different importance than a regular NPC. And this guy decides to blame us for the fact that we tripped and he messed up his hammering where I don't fully see how we connect that it's our fault, but whatever. Whew, that should do it. Well, it's been a long day. And he just goes. Good times. And it's our friend the Rat Kid again. Hey you, Shrimp. You're the one with the phony ticket, ain't ya? Pretty sure you're smaller than I am, so... Yeah, it's a fake. I'll let you see the show if you become my slave. It's kind of a harsh way to put it, but alright. <laughs> awesome. Now for your first assignment. You go stand over there and see if anyone's coming. I know a lot of these have uh, multiple options for what I can select, but uh, I am going to be selecting more often than not the most direct ones. Uh, more so for the fact to try to keep a bit more of a smooth going on through these videos, but also not to waste too, too much time with just random things that don't really pertain to much, you know, clogging up the screen in the time. Screen. Screen. Awesome. Engage according to mission parameters. And this lovely fellow back here is Alleyway Jack. You don't know that yet. But if you talk to him, before he comes up behind you, he, you will essentially save yourself from having money stolen. Uh, if you don't make it in time, he does steal money from you. I'm not too sure if he takes items. It's been a long while since I just allowed that to happen. But um, basically what happens here now is he'll give us a uh, tutorial on the basics on how to play the card game. Approach someone, press X. Some people may not be interested, in that case, move on to someone else. You would probably have noticed uh, sometimes when I was getting near the NPCs, there was the two icons that popped up. One was an exclamation point saying they want to talk, and another one showed the card. That shows that they are actually someone you can play the card game against. But to avoid all this, we're just going to skip to that we know everything essentially. I believe, though, right afterwards, uh, we can just yeah, challenge him to a card game. This I can show you quickly how this goes along. Uh, the rules aren't too, too difficult, although I sometimes find the math that it explains to you doesn't fully add up. Each card has their own... Uh, is this going to go? Ah, oh, Christ. Well, this is not helpful, as I think my game has crashed. Okay. A wonderful... <laughs> oh, hey, oh, we made it. Okay, select five cards to play. So, okay, I was going to end that there and come back to it, but whatever. So, I only have these two cards here to show, but they each have their own little arrows on them. They show which direction you can attack. You have three numbers uh, that can also sometimes be uh, letters depending on how they work and you'll see here the letter P essentially what this shows is first number is their attack strength and the second digit which is usually I think an M or a P says if it's magical or physical attacks you then have I believe it's physical damage defense and then magical damage defense and that's effectively all it uses to figure out whether or not your card can defeat the other one flip it to your side or if your card loses and be essentially becomes your opponent you can cause chains and things to go, and it effectively goes till the person who has the most cards at the end wins. So I'm just going to grab a couple cards here. Uh, you can see the bomb card actually has uh, an attack strength to it. Same with the Iron Knight, and we'll go with the Sahagin. And okay, I might be able to live with this. Uh, place a card next to one of your opponent's cards. If the arrows on your card are facing your opponent's card, you have a chance to capture it effectively how I explained it. And if we put one in here, automatically gives it to us. Once all cards are in play, the player who captures the most is the winner. Uh, you can go here and I might be able to chain this one. There we go. That's how it works. And then he stole it right back. Thank you. Let's place our Sahak in here. Shoot. This is not going well at all. 
<laughs> oh, let's try this then. Oh. <laughs> awesome! Best start to anything I've ever seen. Perfect tutorial. 10 out of 10 would totally play again, but I'm not going to. I just wanted to do that as a quick little thing. Uh, but I am going to call this first video here. I think I've done enough to start this off, explained a few things and all that. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give it a like, give it a subscribe. I'm going to try to keep this going as long as I possibly can. And here's hoping to see you back next time. Have a good one.